Mark Stein is an author and columnist and a close observer of all things Russia plot related, and he joins us tonight. So, Mark, in my hand, I have a document that will end MSNBC's primetime schedule, which has been predicated on the idea that Trump is colluded with the Russians. <laughs> I almost don't want to tell them because I don't want to wreck their, their ratings run. But what are they going to do when they find out? What is CNN going to do? What is the entire American media going to do with the fact that there was actually no collusion? I think they'll just carry on as usual, Tucker, for the, for the very good reason uh, than that uh, they happen to agree with Putin on this. Putin's object, uh, which is a reasonable one for any hostile power to take to other nations, is that he wanted to sow confusion. And he wound up sowing confusion because for the last 18 months, uh, the Democrats and the media have uh, run around like headless chickens, uh, shrieking about uh, some guy who happens to be related to a cabinet secretary who happens to find himself in a bar in the Seychelles and a Russian walks into the bar uh, and it's actually not illegal to talk to Russians in bars or Russians in diners uh, or Russians in department stores that's not a crime so if you want to go to a bar in the Seychelles and talk to a Russian good luck to you and what happened is that uh, the great uh, slow elephantine process of uh, American investigations of this nature, uh, it, which is always looking in the rear view mirror. So we're right. great at investigating stuff that happened two, three years ago. Meanwhile, Putin's getting on with uh, stealing the next election because everybody else is looking ahead while we're doing all this rear view mirror stuff. Well, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> but the next question would be, what about the people whose lives have been destroyed based on the understanding they were in some way colluding with Russia. That would include Carter Page, Ambassador Flynn, people who will never work meaningfully again, who had to sell their houses, who in Flynn's case were indicted. What happens to them? Does, does someone make them whole? Well, I think, I think so, and I actually think that's a more serious problem, uh, because I think there are serious questions about uh, corruption uh, and, and excessive use of muscle at the federal prosecutorial level. I don't think it's respectable that the federal government wins 97% of the cases that no. it drags into court. Uh, that's, uh, that's Saddam Hussein, uh, Kim Jong-un levels of prosecutorial success, and Americans should be ashamed of it, and Americans uh, who seem to think it's clever that you can put the screws on uh, Mike Flynn and persuade him to plead guilty to something uh, just because he doesn't want to have what's left of his savings account cleaned out. I think that's disgusting. And rather than uh, obsessing and worrying about Russia uh, for another two years, I'd like us to actually seriously address what is wrong with federal prosecution, what is wrong with the FBI, what is wrong with the DOJ, and clean it up because it ain't respectable and Americans should be ashamed of it. But that's what we're supposed to be doing in the media, aren't we? We're supposed to be on the lookout for bullies abusing their power and crushing the weak mm. with their power to their own benefit. That's going on and the cheerleaders of it are the media. No, and there's something very weird about actually seeing the left, who used to be all about sticking it to the man, uh, doing this thing, as you just quoted, the so-called 17 intelligence agencies. I, I don't know why we need 17 intelligence agencies, but for some reason it seems to impress left-wing journalists. So if we added another 32 intelligence agencies and we had 49, <laughs> uh, they, uh, if we had 49 spook agencies, uh, the they'd be even more impressed. And these are the same people, by the way, the, the one practical thing to come out of this thing is we need election security in this country, uh, and yet the same people who tell us that they're scared about Russians interfering in the election are the same people all over the country who are saying that illegal immigrants should have the right to vote. In which case, if a Venezuelan or a Colombian can vote, why the hell can't a Russian interfere in the That's election exactly too? We right. can all get a piece of it. That's exactly right. And they're the ones defeating voter ID laws, and they're the ones who are for right. online voting, which needs easily be hacked and right. against paper ballots. It's totally Absolutely. disingenuous. Those are not Absolutely. their concerns at all. What they worship no. is power. That's what they seek. End of right. conversation right there. Mark, thank Absolutely. you very Tucker. much for putting Thanks it all in perspective, as always.